A leader is not someone who goes to a podium and shout onto people and say, I'm going to take my people. No, a leader is somebody who makes his hand dirty, goes down there and mobilizes people and goes to every community and talk with people. You can be the leader, but it doesn't mean you are the savior. Don't make people have that impression that you are the solution. When we tell people that they are weak, that is when we allow them to remain in that state. We should always motivate people. We should always inspire people. Do amazing things and then one day let people realize the brain behind that amazing thing. Instead of people real seeing you and then is when they want to learn what you're doing. This is the NFGM podcast with Godfrey Ochin. Welcome to the End FGM podcast. My name is Jeremiah Kipainoi. I spend time with change makers who are making an impact in Kenya and beyond. Each week, we listen to incredible stories of ordinary people just like you making a difference. They share their successes, failures, and what they are learning along the way. Thank you for being with me today. Let's get started. We are seated here uh, in uh, Dakar, Senegal, with a man who just introduced to him an amazing human being uh, working with Tostan here in West Africa. And his name is Godfrey Ochieng Okumu from the lakeside. So we are not very far away from the climate introduced to us here at the Atlantic Ocean with a man from uh, the savannah <laughs> in East Africa. Oh, thank you very much. I'm called Godfrey Chingokumu. I'm a Kenyan and currently I work with Tostin uh, International based in Dakar. I'm also an activist. I've been an activist now I think for 20 years. 20 whole years. Yeah, 20 years, yeah. I've been an activist in different countries. Uh, supporting issues around youth programming and also ensuring that young people have uh, a space or a platform where they can air their views, where they can re also uh, contribute to development of their countries. Yeah. I know you brought together people from all over Africa yes. and uh, you work among communities that are very much ingrained into their culture yes. and are practicing things like FGM, child marriages, and other harmful cultural practices. But today, I'd like us to focus on female genital mutilation. Of course, of course you'll end up touching on uh, just a few things that revolve around the topic. You've trained young people and old people alike, coming from different parts of Africa, trying to bring an end to female genital mutilation. What's the background? Why? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, at Tostan, Tostan trains uh, NGOs, we train NGO leaders, uh, youth activists, and also we train donors as well, and government officials on methodologies and approaches that can support them and enable them to influence change on issues around FG, FGC. We call it FGC, we don't call it mutilation. And at Tostan we have our reason because it's not mutilation. And uh, mutilating is somebody who is doing it to harm. But we've realized that most of the communities that are cutting their daughters, they are not doing it to arm them. They are doing it because it is an expectation, because it has social values to them, and also it is expected, uh, and uh, it carries sanctions. They do it because it has been done for ages, and they think it is okay to do it because that is what the social network does. So we have been trying to bring uh, different uh, NGOs from different parts of uh, of Africa. Uh, to date, uh, we've been able to train up to 521 practitioners, both young people, old people, from different spheres of life, uh, from 47 countries. And this started in 2015. I just joined Tostan this year. And I've been happy to be part of uh, around uh, three different trainings. Uh, both religious leaders as well, apart from the NGOs, and also traditional uh, cultural custodians. We recently had a training uh, with the Omo Valley elders. Uh, you know Omo Valley, they also have some harmful cultural practices that they are still doing today that also affect and harms uh, human beings. Yes. 
Amazing. So I just bring it down back to you as uh, Godfrey. Yes. Uh, back in Kenya, you started out. Yes. How 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 did you begin? <laughs> yeah, I I began as a, as a youth activist during my days in colleges. When I was in college, I went to different colleges. I studied different things. So during those days, that is when I started to go out. Uh, with my activism work. Uh, before I used to be an artist. I'm still an artist, by the way. What kind of artist do you uh, sing? Performing? No, 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 not a singer. I'm a performing artist. Drama. I also do drawing a bit. Uh, but nowadays I am kind of like <laughs> not in it. But uh, I started with the performing. My, my, my initial introduction into, into activism started through art. We used to use uh, a theater and dances to communicate messages, especially on sensitive issues. So I, I was part of the young people who, who were behind the struggle of bringing the national youth policy in Kenya during those days in early 2000. So that is where I started my activism and then I got into issues around girls, uh, education issues around child marriage and then FGC uh, I, I started working around F FGC programming in uh, in the year uh, in the year 2010 when I was working with an NGO that was trying to support girls education uh, and all that so my life has evolved around uh, activism not only in Kenya I have done activism in Zambia in South Africa, in Malawi, Tanzania, Uganda, <laughs> and even other parts of other parts of the continent. So I have been a moving advocate for young people here. Yeah. Let's call you an African advocate. Yeah, an African uh, advocate. Yeah. And so uh, today we are here, um, many years later, since you first began your activism work, and this reminds me of just what you just said. It reminds me. Um, of some street performers who I really find effective in their work on how they dramatize some of these things around around HIV. Mm -hmm. I've met them in Nairobi and they are so funny. And people gather around in circles mm -hmm. in the city center watching them and the message is just powerful. So I agree with you that art is very important. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, a in, tool, yeah. it's, 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 it's a powerful tool yes. in ending harmful cultural practices and mm -hmm. also just um, taking out the word because mm -hmm. It's not judgmental when, when passing, and it's very uh, comical at times. So I agree with you with that. Yes. So today we are here in Dakar, mm -hmm. Senegal, at the yes, shores of yes, the Atlantic yes. Ocean. And uh, we are here because mm -hmm. uh, people have come together to talk about mm -hmm. how they are dealing with these vices in their communities and in their countries and in, um, in their regions. Mm -hmm and see how they could exchange ideas and how could they network to make this work easier from either an NGO perspective uh, or from a governmental as perspective or even as individuals. And here you are having worked with different people from all over Africa. Is there an importance attached to bringing people together? And you've been doing this for quite some time. Why is it important? At times it's not easy for everyone to visit everywhere but uh, conferences like this one are are, are, are are platform that brings the globe within a specific you know within a specific area you know like you see like now we consider the whole world here because this conference has brought the world together to share what is working in their communities to share some of the challenges they have because there are people who are also here to learn from other people so it is creating an amazing platform for us to learn for us to acquire new ideas and for also us to share uh, ideas and also share interventions that have been working in our countries or within our context and then it's also an opportunity for people to also uh, try to choose or try to identify specific methodologies or approaches that they can go and integrate back in their programmings when they go. So to me, these conferences are very important and they mean a lot to our life. As a young person, I believe that these are, these are the beginning, the genesis of change, bringing change. So I encourage young people, 
that when they get opportunity to attend these conferences, they should learn from it. And when they go back home, they should really make sure that the interventions are more vibrant than they were the way they were. They were the way they were before they came to this conference. I know there are people who have gone to conferences, but nothing changed. <laughs> they go back, still do the same things that they were doing before. So you wonder, why did they go there? Yeah. Oh, they go there, they, 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 they don't make friends. It's also an opportunity to network, make new friends, people you can learn, people you can, you know, you can reach out to when you want to do something new. You know. Because you know, when you live in your own world, you think that what you're doing is the best. When you reach out to other people, you realize that there's so many things you don't know. So these conferences give you that opportunity to meet other people. It gives you the opportunity to know that pe things can be done differently. Yeah, you, it's also an opportunity for you to get out of that comfort zone. Yeah. yeah, you know, some of us have been living within certain comfort zone and we don't want to leave because we have not been exposed. So certain level of exposure can make you to interrogate yourself and have self-reflection and say, my friend, I think I am not doing the right thing to my community. It is high time I need to change some certain things. So, yeah, so it's a game changer. To me, it's a game changer, yeah. In the previous podcast, I was sitting with a Maasai warrior and uh, he was saying um, that it is very important for him to be able to come to such places because there's a saying in Maasai and Samuru land that says uh, the eye that leaves the village is the, one, is the, is the wise eye. As, as an organization, what kind of trainings do you give these yeah. people? Okay, the training uh, that Tostan uh, deliver uh, is based on our CEP, our Community Empowerment Program model. We, 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 we share with them our model in terms of uh, uh, the theories that the model is based on. We also share with them some practical sessions within this uh, CEP. And also to maybe uh, tell you CEP, CEP is, uh, is, is, is a three years uh, intervention. Uh, it's an educational intervention. Uh, it is uh, uh, non-formal non-formal uh, education. It uses a non-formal education model. Uh, it is structured. It has sessions that runs. Uh, like in, in uh, some, most of the communities, sessions run uh, thrice in a week. And community, leader, community members, uh, different, are brought together to be taken through these interventions. Uh, we have trained facilitators who are based in the community. They don't come and go back maybe to the cities. No, they stay in the community for those three years. Yeah. So the intervention uh, focuses on different aspects of life. We have component on human rights. We have, uh, we have, we have sessions also on, uh, on, uh, on, 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 uh, on health and hygiene. We have sessions on, on literacy, uh, issues around literacy. And also we have sessions on uh, income generating activities, IGAs. And also, uh, we also have uh, sessions on, uh, on, 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 on trying to help communities to, to work together, uh, building the, community of, uh, the, the capacity of community in terms of problem solving, uh, teamwork, team building, communication skills and all that. So it is a comprehensive intervention. And now what we do during these uh, 10 days where we bring people together is just you cannot... Uh, share with them the three years thing. You just share with them the key components of our programming and we actually get some sessions. We we, we get some specific sessions within the, the CEP program and we take them through it. And then they also we also take them to the community where they go to the community and have this you know this experience of what this of what we are talking about. So it's not only theory is also practical where they have the opportunity to go to the community and experience some of the interventions. Uh, but also we give them, uh, we also invite some community members because they cannot go to other communities who also come and share with them their experience. So it's more of like, you know, more like uh, integrated uh, approaches to make sure that we deliver the, 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 the training in a more empowering way. Yeah, so more the training is called promoting well-being. So it's more of like we try to promote community well-being by introducing these uh, NGO leaders, uh, young activists, uh, religious leaders to methodologies that have worked for Tosten. And we always say that they might not work for you. Everything will not work for you, but some things will work for you. Yeah, yeah. 
And so what I get from you is that you do not just inter, you, you do not just uh, train people who are working in the child protection department, no. but it's basically um, people who are working in the uh, uh, civic sphere. Yes. yes where, yeah. yeah. So uh, things that are common for people who are doing human rights, people who are doing um, uh, things like community uh, empowerment. Mm -hmm. So while doing these things, you've come across people from completely different cultures mm -hmm. and even languages, I'd say, because we also have French from this side of West yes, Africa. Yes, yes. And so you've sat down with different people from, all dif from different parts of the world mm -hmm. and you've had different experiences uh, from the ground. Are there some commonali commonalities, uh, while especially uh, for the child protection departments, are there commonalities that you've realized come together while training these uh, people? Yes. Yes, we've realized a lot of things and also we've learned from from people. Tostan, the good thing about Tostan is that Tostan is a learning organization. We learn every day, we learn new ideas from other people. We don't say that we know everything, we learn new things and people have always appreciated the training. We've seen people who come with very nice innovation but they still appreciate the Tostan approach. Like now you, you have been talking with Josephine. She could tell you she had done amazing thing, but you've heard what she said. The only thing she wants is to end FGC and child marriage. With all those things she has been able to do, to do she has not yet able, she has not been able to end FGC and child marriage. Meaning she's doing an amazing job. I've, I know, I've been a visited her. She's doing an amazing job. We've worked together with her. But still, she appreciates the Tosan approach. Yeah, you see, we meet people who have done great interventions, who when they come, they say, we want to go and see what Tosan is talking about. I think what we are doing is great. But on the first week, towards the end of the first week, they come to us and tell us, hey, guys, I was doing a lot of mistakes. <laughs> they come. Some of them I've seen in the, in the conference, in the amphitheater there. They come and say, I've actually realized I do a lot of mistakes. Yeah. They thought that they were perfect, they but they, were. <laughs> yeah, they, they didn't have any, any background of what they were supposed to and do. Even, so. And even Tostan before, Tostan did a lot of mistakes, and we learned from those mistakes. Yeah, and one thing that I think also really uh, affects a lot of uh, organizations outside there is... We do mistakes and we don't want to accept that we do mistakes. We cover up for these mistakes. When you cover up for this mistake, is the community that suffer. You don't suffer. You'll get grants. You'll go to another areas and work and do that. But the community, you are cheating the community you're working in. So when you do mistake, accept. Tell the community we did mistakes. Yeah, and also make them understand. Make people understand that doing mistake is not wrong. People learn from mistake. The crazy part is when you do mistake and you don't learn from it. That is now not okay. But when you do mistake and you change things and you learn from it, that is amazing. And you acknowledge that you are doing mistake, that is super amazing. But when you do them and you don't acknowledge them, you will never learn. And that is a problem with a lot of NGOs and a lot of organizations and even a lot of governments. They do mistake, they cover up, and they don't want to be told that they did mistake. They are very defensive. And they can even fight you, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they say that the truth hurts and uh, sometimes... Yeah, but, but we all learn from mistakes and we should take that positively. Well, sometimes it's difficult to, to accept mistakes because uh, when, when, you are, when, when, you make, when you make mistakes, probably sometimes you've even um, incurred financial losses and you will not want to bring that out sometimes. So I know that that could be a problem, but I understand that it's important to know and understand and acknowledge mm -hmm. that you've done um, a mistake and mm -hmm. you'll be willing to, uh, to learn from it. Mm -hmm. And so there are successes, failures, mm -hmm. and uh, what you've learned along the way. Is this, is this changing? Um, uh, do you think uh, these people you train are, are going to change anything from, 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 from what you teach them? Not that we think they are already changing, and we're already seeing change. You remember recently in Kenya, we had a declaration by the Ma. The people who, lead, who led that declaration from Maasai were actually alumni of Tostan. They came to Tostan training before. They loved the training. They had discussion with the training team afterwards. The training team supported them on what to do. And after three years, they did the first declaration in their community. 
Tosan didn't go to communities and within three years people abandoned uh, FGC and child marriage. No, it took years. The abandonment take time after our programs and it's not automatic. And there are those communities where we have not been before, but they also abandoned because they were, they were influenced by communities that toast and train that also abandoned. People abandon when they see more people abandoning. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there are people who just wait for other people to abandon is when they abandon. I, I was listening to a podcast uh, about a country, I can't remember what specific country it is, but they've been trying to make people to pay taxes, but people over time have not been able to, to accept that they should be paying taxes. People see taxation as, you know, we are paying these people so that they can go misuse these funds. Mm. And so what they did, instead of, of sanctioning people and, uh, and harassing their businesses, they just said, you know, 64% of the population pays taxes. And that's for that really worked out for them. They kept on sending newsletters to people's inboxes, telling them, you know, uh, it's time to file returns, for example. Uh, have you filed your returns? Do you pay taxes? Please uh, uh, check them in. And it worked because someone saw, oh, 64%. And I'm not, it's only me. It's almost like me, only me not paying taxes. And that worked for them better than uh, trying to push people uh, by telling them, you know, if you don't if you don't pay taxes, then uh, we'll arrest you. Yeah. So is that still the, the same model? Yeah, it's still the same model. It's still the same model because uh, the the Tostan approach actually views the community in terms of their strength, not their weakness. It doesn't shame. It doesn't call names. It doesn't discriminate. It respects people's way of life. It respects people's values. In every community, even if they are poor, they still have something unique in them. They still have certain strength. Africa, we don't believe that people are poor because they want to be poor. People are poor because structures and system makes them poor. There is something unique about that community. If you don't identify that unique thing and intervene, through their strength, you will never succeed. If you come in thinking that you have the solution to their problem, you will never succeed. Tostan goes to a community believing that they have the solution. We empower them, we do what we call, we build their capacity to aspire. Yeah, you see, we build their capacity to aspire. That they, can, they are capable and they are able to bring their own change. Yeah, so we believe in people, we believe in their strength, we believe in their unity, we believe in the values that they have. And that is why we do value deliberation. We look at each of those values and see, look at the cultural, uh, and then the community identify the harmful uh, cultural uh, practices themselves and say this one doesn't reinforce this value. We actually believe that it was reinforcing and now we are learning today that it's actually harmed some of us. And now people start coming up and saying, actually, you are being, now we have the opportunity to talk. Let us talk. We have been suffering. Yeah. It allows people to come out and start talking. Before, some people don't talk about this social norm. You know you. You, you know you come from Kenya. People don't talk about them. They happen. We know there are a lot of rape. There are a lot of defilement within our community. People don't talk about them. We know they are child married people because they are considered normal. Because they are... I was born, it was happening and all that. So when people talk about them, they think they will also be sanctioned. Some of them have been related with cultural things and with, with, uh, with superstitious things. They will say, if you talk about it badly, you will die, you will become blind, you will be dumb. So there have been a lot of things that have been trying to make these things to remain in place. And this has made people to be scared. But when people learn that other people are changing and nothing is happening to them, and when people get new information, it's very easy for them to change. The community is not stupid. Yeah, they are not. The community is not stupid. And Nobody uh, is stupid. Everybody is good in their own way. Everyone is unique. It is, it is you. I can never find someone like you again. You are you. I am me. You are unique on your own way. Yeah, you see? Yes, you can have a child who resembles you, but he will not be you. <laughs> You, your strengths are your strengths. And for us, for this strength to manifest into something that is visible, we have to work together. We need to get 
capacity. We need to be empowered to work together. Yeah. These things have to be tapped in us. These talents you have there that somebody has not been able to help you to tap it up. They've not been able to help you to nurture it. The day somebody supports you, lift off your hands and tell you that you have that capacity, my friend, you will do miracles. So when we tell people that they are weak, that is when we allow them to remain in that state. We should always motivate people. We should always inspire people. We should always make people feel great. That is why we should not shame people. We should not have caste where you call people like you, you a slave. You know, you know, no, 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 no. Believe in them. We've seen great people coming from communities where we never knew these great people could come from. We've seen great leaders coming from communities that were socially excluded from development. You see, yeah. You know where Obama comes from. Who knew that that community could could ever bring an American president? Nobody knew about that. Now Kogelo is something else. Kogelo, everyone believes that they can be something great. Kogelo changed. When Obama became a president, that community changed. For the first time, they were able to see electricity. For the first time, they, they were able to, to experience tarmac road, paved roads. And there are still so many communities in Sierra that doesn't even have paved roads. Things are possible and they believe that you should not demean yourself. You should not believe that it is not. Yes, we can. Everything is possible. So what you're saying is true. People should not believe that they cannot do anything. We are able, and that is why I always believe that FGC will come to an end. It will come to an end. We just have to believe that it will come to an end. We know the complicity, we know it's complex, but that should not bring us down. We should not shy away from talking about it. It will take time. We should not get bored. We should continue dialoguing and engaging the community and talking to them. Make them understand, you see, yeah. Make them understand why it is important to abandon and let it be collective action. You can never abandon FGM one person. You cannot go to a podium and start saying that, no, I want to abandon FGC. I am, for example, I, I want to do it. I want to mobilize people. No, no, no. This is about collective effort. Is it important to dissociate people from the savior mentality? Yeah, yeah. That is what I was talking about. You should not be that person that believes that you are the one who is going to, to, to save the community. Yeah. Never have that mentality. Be a leader. And a leader is someone who walks the journey with people. A leader is not someone who goes to a podium and shout onto people and say, I'm going to take my people. No, a leader is somebody who makes his hand dirty, goes down there and mobilizes people and goes to every community and talk with people. Yeah, that is a good leader. A leader is someone who mobilizes people. You mobilize people and you empower them so that they help you. You don't do it on yourself. You, this thing, you cannot do it on yourself, my friend. How many years have we been trying to end poverty in Africa? So many years because our interventions are single issue. Single issued intervention can never end poverty. We should have a more inclusive, integrated and comprehensive approaches where you work with people, build allies. You can be the leader but it doesn't mean you are the savior. Don't make people have that impression that you're the solution. Do amazing thing and then one day let people realize the brain behind that amazing thing. Instead of people real seeing you and then is when they want to learn what you're doing. Let them see what you're doing is when they come and look for you. So the savior mentality is very dangerous. And especially with the issue of uh, ending FGC. I want to see young people who have not been cut coming out, this generation coming out and telling us their experience in living in a community where there is no more cutting and no more FGM. We will give people hope. You know, when you, when you intervene, it's not bad to have survivors. Culture needs dialogue. To end harmful cultures need dialogue with positive imaging. It's not about naming and shaming and attacking people. You see, yeah? yeah. Yeah, so me, I want to lead a revolution of young people coming from these communities who want to tell stories that I was not cut, I didn't, I was not married, 
you see, and it is possible. And we have that here in Senegal. We have now a gener breakthrough generation of young people who are coming from these communities that used to cut, and now they are telling this experience of 20 years not experiencing the cut because their parents stood one day 20 years ago and declared an entry. That is the people I want to see now. That is what will give African hope. Africa has been dented with bad name. When you talk of poverty, we see Africa. Can we talk of development and see Africa? Yeah. You see, can we talk of education and see girls who come out and say, I went to education because somebody somewhere stood up and said, I have to go get educated. And also, I'm going to stand up and say, no, any other girl will face this. Not because I faced it, but because I experienced living in a love free from HGC and child marriage. That is what Tostan believes in. You said it well, you said it all. Um, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, I, I, one thing I have learned in this conversation is the importance of, of bringing people together mm -hmm. and uh, showing them that they can do things mm -hmm. by themselves mm -hmm. and that they are capable of doing what they are doing. Mm -hmm. And another thing that I have learned mm -hmm. is the statement you brought um, at, at, at the end mm -hmm. that everyone ev everyone has a responsibility by the end of the day mm -hmm. and you will not be able to do anything on yourself without involving others mm -hmm. thank you very much for um having this it in and uh, just share your, your your background and also um, the experience you've had and the work you're doing uh, to try bring an end to um, uh, maybe harmful cultural practices and also empowering people from uh, different parts of the country, uh, of the continent. I keep on saying country because continent. I've been talking to people who mostly work within Kenya. So thank you very much for that. I don't know if you would be uh, willing to share um, your contact like some, like an email address where people could be able to reach ah, you uh, okay. yeah because that's important just in case someone says ah yeah. oh, i really like that yeah, podcast yeah, yeah, we could have yeah, a conversation yeah, maybe a coffee yeah, with him yeah. when he comes to nairobi no or problem. probably they are based in no the car uh, my email address is uh, uh godfrey okumu godfrey okumu at tostan.org tostan.org just godfrey okumu at tostan.org Yes, so I think Godfrey also feels at home because um, we are just next to the Atlantic Ocean here and he yeah. says he comes from the coastal city of Kisumu. Yes, where there is uh, fish, fresh fish. <laughs> but now here is salty fish, of yeah, course. You have lots of seafood here. Yeah, it's seafood here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Asante sana and thank you for coming to, uh, to the NFGM podcast. My name is Jeremiah Kipainoi and uh, thank you very much for listening. Today we are with Godfrey Okumu who has been in uh, the civic uh, field, let's say, for a long, long time now and has been dealing with FGC because they say that FGM is not what they say here. So I'm, I'm going to use the FGC time today. Uh, he's been working with the FG, FGC um, programs, let's say, uh, since 2010. Yeah, 2010. Thank you very much, and I am going to hear from you soon. You can get bonus materials, notes, and much more at www.kipainoi.com. K I P A I N O I.com. Please remember, we all can do something. Go out and make a difference, for we all have a responsibility to make this world a better place. Goodbye.